scenes, go to a location, perceive what was there, come back, and then go check my perceptions with other people, that I actually could perceive what was at a different location. Um, the, the mind can be non-local. Um, there are certain theories about um, monism and dualism. Monism is the theory that mind and body are one and it, uh, the mind doesn't go anywhere. Um, it's just the workings of the brain. The dualism is that the mind and body can be separate, perhaps are separate most of the time, and can travel and access information at different locations. And perhaps both are right. You know, I can be in a monist state when I'm sitting focused very intently on a task. Mind and body are working together very closely. Or I can be non-local in a dualist state when I can be out accessing information for a project. It sounds so otherworldly. And if I hadn't been to your class and done the level of groundwork I've done on it, just coming to the class was life-altering. But I would say the average person, unless they've had an out-of-body experience, wouldn't know how to receive that information on non-locality because it doesn't really fit within our notions of who we are, that we are bigger than the sum total of our body and our brain. Yeah, it doesn't fit with the accepted scientific paradigm, which is still the behaviorist paradigm. If it can't be measured, um, it's not real. And it's difficult to measure the mind and what the mind can do. That's where remote viewing has really contributed because when somebody does a remote viewing project and they find the missing person or they go out and find a location, um, find the missing car, um, then that's measurable. So you can be measuring consciousness. Can you share a little bit about this whole thing about writing down a coordinate, asking a question, and then doing those squiggles like an ideogram? Can you share a little bit about that? Right. Um, this was developed by Ingo Swan, and um, it was an effort to put what he did naturally into a format that could be trained to other people, that other people could be trained in. And he developed a six-stage protocol, which is very sequential. You start off with a pile of uh, sheet of sheets of white paper and a black pen, and you go through a very sequential protocol, writing things down, saying them. You start off with some data basing, you know, your name, location, date, and time. And the coordinate is... Um, a random series of letters and numbers that are like the address of a particular location or a, um, a picture in an envelope or a humanitarian location um, that embodies certain questions about that. What is this location? Where can we find these people? That's written down and just given this serial number or address or case number, you could think of it as. And that, that series of letters and numbers is called a coordinate. It's not so much, it started off as actual geographic coordinates, but that was changed to just a random series of letters and numbers with, there's a whole story behind that. Um, and then once you've written that down, you allow your subconscious to do a little squiggly drawing, a little squiggly as we were calling it in class, yeah. which is called an ideogram, which is a little shorthand uh drawing that embodies the information, the first information about the target site. And then you, then there's a certain protocol to go through to look at that ideogram and say, does it have angles? Does it have curves? Does it have flat lines? What does it do? What, how does it move? How does it feel? And from there, you can get your first stab at what this might be. Is this a biological? Is this land? Is this water? Is this airy? Is this a man-made? And just within that first five minutes, you can get your first stab at what this, what the, um, the object or event or person or location is. It's really profound. It's definitely part of your business for applications, right? You use this in applications. I do. In fact, um, I used it. I used just the ideogram part in a research project two years ago looking at um, healthy and sick uh, plants 
there was a, a researcher who wanted to find a quick way for remote viewers to go in and take a look at a series of plants, um, which were all designated a coordinate, um, and then to write that coordinate down and from doing the ideogram, decide whether this was a sick or healthy plant. And in that series of uh, research, there was one series where I actually got 8 out of 10 and another one where I got 10 out of 10 just using the ideogram method. Wow. It surprised me. <laughs> Let's talk about the different humanitarian as well as business applications and life applications that people could call upon you if they're not taking your training, they could task you with. Talk about that. I think it's really important. Right. I'm, I'm an independent co contractor and I have uh, clients across the world. And uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. We do some humanitarian work. So there's a, um, during the ha Haitian earthquake, um, the Hotel Montana was just uh, destroyed. And uh, there was a humanitarian aid worker and another local guy that was with him, and they were looking for the bodies. Well, using a, a combination of um, the CRV, controlled remote viewing, and spontaneous remote viewing, um, a group of us were able to pinpoint an area where we felt, and we were able to describe an area and the, and the two men who had sadly passed away. Um, and eventually they were able to get in there and retrieve the bodies. And when they gave us feedback, we were within that same area that, um, where the bodies were found. I mean, on one hand, you're doing this great service, but isn't it eerie and icky to be dealing with dead bodies when you're doing remote viewing? Absolutely. And if you go into this work, you have to be prepared. You know, you're going to find dead bodies if that's what the tasking is. And uh, don't go into the work if you're squeamish, you don't like blood or bloated bodies, you know, because you're going to come across them um, that, in that kind of work. Um, then there's the business applications, for example. Um, I have one client that I'm doing some stocks and shares uh, evaluations, um, again, using the ideogram method, and also another group that are giving me... Um, comparisons of currencies. They want to know what a certain currency is going to do against another currency six months, a year, five years. And again, using the uh, ideogram method. Um, they've been quite happy with uh, what I've given them. Have you ever in the last six months with the Casey Anthony case done a private remote viewing on whether she did it or not? Not a formal one. Uh, just my own gut feelings. And again, you know, I feel she had a, a strong involvement there, as did the parents. Um, I feel there was a lot covered up. Uh, the fact that they didn't prove that she murdered the child, you know, that was just half the story. I feel that there was a lot more that we will never know. I guess if you really wanted to know it, you could go into controlled remote viewing, but there's so many hours in a day. It's not productive to do it, but... No, I've got a life. You know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, have done, I have done that kind of work, uh, finding a, a body for a, a colleague whose friend had gone missing and uh, was able to do work located where the body was and, and uh, so to the point where he was able to call the coroner's office when the body was um, pulled out of the water and say, that's my friend, <laughs> you know, um, from the information that the viewer, remote viewers gave him. So it can be done, but, you know, I can't remote view every single case in the world. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a life. I'm sure there's some cases, though, that you want to know, even though you don't talk about it. There's going to be some that you just... Oh, I know on a gut level, yeah. But again, you know... Who you can share it with your friends. Um, I can't be out there making all of these predictions, and you know, I know there are some folks who, whatever they perceive, it, it goes out in a blog. Or I don't do that. It's only when somebody tasks me that I go into a, a more in-depth remote viewing. Have you done any type of remote viewing at any serious tornadoes or earth events in the next year or two, besides the ones you've already written about? I really haven't. Okay. Um, I did take a look for a client at 2012 
because that was of 